Good morning. Good morning, Squiddy. Michael. Schwartzmeyer. Welcome to Wednesday. Ryan. I hope you guys are all doing well. Hold on one second. Um, yes, so those three sections. So the plotting is the last thing we're doing for uh, MATLAB. You have that 35 minutes of videos to watch. Um, a homework to do, which technically isn't due till Wednesday, next week. I changed the due date on UB Learns. I, if you have time and energy, uh, get everything done for MATLAB before the midterm. If you don't, it's fine, you have time after. Um, and then the plotting chapter in Zybooks, it's three sections. There's no challenge activities. Um, really simple. That is the last thing to do for Zybooks. There is, there are still Zybooks chapters on the linear algebra stuff. It just reads more like a textbook and it's very dry and boring and not as useful. So, um, um, so, uh, so we're not making you read that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's the last thing for Zybooks. You'll also, um, redistribute that energy towards the programming project. Uh, Flora, weren't you here this morning? Why do I, maybe I'm going crazy. Um, yes, I will go over stuff for the midterm. I am gonna go over a bunch of stuff for homework seven first. Um, there's been a lot of questions. Homework seven is always the hardest homework. So I'm gonna go over um, some answers to some of the common questions that I've heard over um, the course of the last couple days. Uh, and I, I did go over this stuff at the end of last week, but it always sinks a little bit more when you've wrestled with the material and struggled. Um, so I'm going to go over it again. Um, so hopefully it makes a little more sense to you. Uh, and then I will go into the midterm, um, what to do, how to prepare, what to do on the day of. I'll go over as many practice problems as I can get through today. I got through two this morning. <laughs> in my eight in 9 a.m <laughs> i will post video solutions and solutions to the rest of the problems that i don't get through today um good morning ft remy um yes so there's lots to do today um get through to the midterm next week next week will be easier good morning eddie murphy Midterm week for us. You guys have been dealing with this for a while now, so. Is there is there a week where the midterms end? <laughs> like they all begin in week four and they all end in week 13? I mean, nobody really has an exam in week one or two typically, maybe week two. They don't stop. <laughs> Um, yes, so Ryan, you will have, they stopped May 15th, um, they, uh, so you will have homework assignments along with the project, um, after the midterm, they're going to be different. It's going to be linear algebra based, so it's going to be math, um, you'll be able to check all of your homework using MATLAB yourself, um, they're just, they're just different. Lectures are going to be going over example by example by example, um, so yes but they're they're different they're not they're not going to be programming homeworks which tend to be more of a struggle for students um keep in mind you do want to do the homework after you want, do you want to do the linear algebra homework because your final exam is going to be 
mostly linear algebra or all linear algebra, you know, one of those two. Um, so yes. Okay. 1130. Let us start. Um, so like I said, I'm going to go over, uh, some common questions I've seen on the homework this week. It took me about 15 minutes to do this this morning. Um, so I'm just going to go through. Okay. Problem one. Problem one. I haven't really seen very many questions on the upper, so I'm going to go over the lower. So uh, for the lower, it seems like most people can more or less get this, the general matrix, but keep in mind there's lots of different options. So we could have lower, that's not how you spell lower, lower three comma three, where it's just going to be a square matrix. It'd be one, zero, zero, two, two, zero, three, 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 right? That would be lower three, three. We also have lower, let's say we have three, five, where we have more columns than we have rows. It would look the same as my square matrix, but I would just have extra columns that are just zeros. The one that students are struggling with is if we have more rows than we have columns. So let's say I want five rows, three columns. It would look like this. One, zero, zero, two, two, zero, three, 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 four, 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 five, five, five. MATLAB, if you create this matrix the same way you create this one and this one, MATLAB's not going to tell you that you have extra columns being added. MATLAB's just going to add extra columns and give you a square matrix that looks like this. But you don't want five by three. You don't want five by five, you want five by three. You only want this piece. So some way, somehow, you need to figure out that when you have more rows than columns, you need to make MATLAB stop. Because MATLAB is just gonna keep going. It's just gonna keep adding as many columns as it needs when you are writing your code. It's gonna keep adding columns for this four, adding columns for this five. You don't want it to do that. So somehow you need to create this normal matrix and then add in this. So there's, there's many ways to do it, um, but that's the idea. Somehow you need to figure out, write some code that says, okay, in this scenario, if this happens, I need to do this. That's the biggest issue when it comes to lower. Upper, like I said, I haven't really seen many issues with upper, um, which I guess is a good thing. Um, um, but this is the big issue with lower. We need to make sure to cut it off here to stop MATLAB from adding these unnecessary, undesired columns. Okay, well, you can do that in if statement. Uh, on MATLAB grader, it does. So on MATLAB grader, I added in the three tests more specifically, one that does this check, one that does this check, one that does that check. So it should work if you get all of the points on for, um, if you get all of the points in MATLAB grader, it does check for all three scenarios. So you should be good. Um, is there anything you need? So could you use break? Uh, sure, if you can figure out a way to use break, sure, if you want to, just keep, just remember, remember that you still need these numbers. So I've seen a couple of people where they'll get something like this. So I've seen a couple of people where they still have a five by three, but they don't didn't fill in these last two um, uh, rows. So make sure you're filling in those last rows. Is there anything you need to cut off with columns greater than rows? Uh, no, because uh, if you start everything out at zeros, MATLAB's not gonna have to add anything extra. So there's really no difference between these two. These both should work if you set it up correctly. It's this one that needs an adjustment. Okay, so that's the first problem. Sure. Mitchell, there's multiple ways to do it. Multiple ways to do it. If it works, it works. That's what matters. Problem two. Problem two. Um, so problem two, the biggest issue I've seen with this one is uh, this conditional. So we want to repeat until the relative error is, I uh, have the wrong document. I didn't fix that. Less than a tolerance or the number of iterations is greater than 50. 
Um, I have so many versions of everything floating around. So repeat until the relative error is less than the tolerance or the number of iterations is greater than 50. So when you are figuring out your conditional for a while loop, you want to figure out when you want to stop. Write that conditional. Repeat until the relative error is less than a tolerance. So I want to stop when my error is less than a tolerance or my number of iterations. So N is greater than 50. So that's when I want to stop. Then you're going to invert it. Write the opposite. So you want to continue. That's going to be your opposite. When E is greater than or equal to the tolerance, equal is really not going to make a difference. Uh, N less than 50. Less than or equal to 50. Okay, so this is how you want to figure out your, your while loop conditionals. Figure out when you want to stop. This one's easier to think about. It's easier in our brains to identify when do I want to stop? That's one thing. I want to stop when this happens. Invert it to figure out when you want to continue. This is the one that goes next to your while. Keep in mind um, that when you are counting your number of iterations, it happens in three locations. You have some initial value, n equals something. You're testing to see if n is greater than or less than 50. And then you're incrementing, n equals n plus one. When you are done with your loop, when you're done out here, n should contain the exact number of iterations. The exact number. So, if n starts at 1, so we have n starting at 1, you increment n at the end of your first loop, at the end of your first iteration. So at the end of your first iteration, n is going to equal 2. So when you exit your loop, even though you've only done one iteration, n contains a value of 2. So make sure, make sure you're paying attention to what is your initial value of n, when are you incrementing it, what does the exact number, what is the number when you're done? And then what are you comparing it to? Because depending on when you do all of those things, you might have 49 iterations when you want 50. You might have, uh, you might stop when you hit 51 iterations, when you meant to stop when you had 50. Um, you might contain and might have one more iteration than, um, than you actually had. Uh, when uh, you exit the loop. So maybe you need to adjust when you exit. So once again, that just depends on what your initial value for n is. It depends on when you increment. It depends on what you want n to contain at the end. So you need to pay attention to all of these things. One other thing with loops is you need to print everything out. I said this last week, print everything out. This is a very, very important debugging technique, especially when it comes to loops. So somewhere in this while loop, you want to say f print f print out your n value, print out your error value, and don't just print out your error to like three decimal points. You're checking to see if your error is incorrect all the way out, to, or you're trying to see what your error value is all the way out to like ten digits past the decimal point, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen. So print out to maybe ten digits past the decimal point. Oh, come on. Print out your VMP, whatever that is. Once again, print out 10 digits past the decimal point. Um, so print out everything to make sure, okay, so if N is my number of iterations, what is your N value at each iteration? Sure, you can keep your F print F statement in there. That's not, that's not the big of a deal. Um, yeah, you can keep it in when you submit. It's not that big of a deal. It's checking for your, your N values anyway, not what's printed out. If we asked you to print it out, then yes, that'd be great. Um, so print out your n value. Make sure you're counting. Like, and when n is one, that's one iteration, not two iterations or zero iterations. Um, print out your error. Is your error decreasing when it should be decreasing? Is your error increasing? Is it expecting, is it alternating? Did you forget the absolute value? 
Uh, and then VMP, same thing. Is it changing? It should change. Is it updating? Um, so all of these things will give you an indicator of why you might be having issues with your code. Um, so Flora, yes, if it makes sense, if you set n to zero, you might check n less than 50. Uh, if you set n to one, it might be n less than or equal to 50. Once again, just print everything out, count. See, okay, so it printed out three times, is n equal to three at the end? Um, so, I don't know why you would set n equal to 100 to start with, but it depends on how you want to do things. I mean, technically, you could make it work if you decrease your um, n value every time, then it would work. Okay, so that, that is the big things, I believe, for that problem. Um, yes, those are the big things for that problem. Uh, this last one, the integration. So you are writing a function and then you are going to use that function. In your integral function, you are doing this calculation. You're saying h over three equal, not, yeah, not equals, h over three times y one plus four something plus two something plus y end. This is your calculation. This something and this something are your sums. Some one, some two. When you see a capital sigma, capital sigma, this immediately should translate to loop. Capital sigma equals loop. Usually it's a for loop, not always. Usually it's a for loop. Okay, so we'll say four. And then you need your loop control or your loop index variable. For what values? Those values here come from whatever your limits are on here. So this one says for i uh, equals two, two, four, all the way to m. Nope, that's not right. Two, four, six, dot, 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 all the way to m. Name whatever variable you want. It says i here. I'm just going to say for i. Why name it differently? I want i to start at two. I want it to increment here. I want it to go all the way to M. M because it stops here. So sigma, capital sigma, means for loop. This here comes from these values. Where are you starting? Where are you ending? Lots of circles. That is what should go in your mind when you see sigma. So you have a for loop here, and you have a for loop here. Okay. Two separate for loops, it's fine. You're summing up a bunch of numbers. So you're gonna say s equals zero at the top. Then you have your for loop. And inside your for loop, you say s equals s plus, new term. This is how we sum a bunch of numbers. Let me write that better. Your new term is whatever you're adding together. You need to figure this out. It also comes from your sigma, but this is what you're adding together. So S equals S plus your new term. What are you adding together? That is what you see when you see sigma. Keep in mind, X is a vector of M plus one evenly spaced values. So X might look like this. One, two, three, four, five. If X looks like this, M is going to equal four. If X looked like this, negative one, zero, one, three. Nope, that's not how you count. Two, three, four, five. Then M would be six. Here are seven values, here are five values. So you can use however many values X has in order to calculate M. So here's M plus one values. Here is M plus one values. So it doesn't matter what X contains as long as just it just contains M plus one values. 
Okay, once you have your function written, you have your function, you have your file, it says function i equals integral uh, x comma y. It does all your calculations and this is end. Now you're going to use your function. How do you use a function? Just like you use any other function. You type the name of the function. You send it however much data it needs. It needs an x vector. It needs a y vector. You're going to start store your results in whatever variable you want. Call it i. Call it output. Call it whatever you want. So your goal is to calculate these things using that integral function. Your integral function does this integration. It does this. Come on. Where your integral equals integral x comma y. These are your x values. It's not x here though, it's t for this function. It's your independent variable. And here's your y values. It's this calculated with t. Your limits here are reflected in your t vector. So your t vector goes from ti to tf. That's your limits. You can't do an indefinite integral in uh, MATLAB for calculation. Um, you can only do definite integrals, right? That's what they're called, definite, indefinite, indefinite. Um, but that's what this function does. There is a MATLAB function called INT that does the integration, although I'm pretty sure it uses symbolic math. We don't know how to do that. We wrote our own int function, our own integral function. Okay. Like I said, those are some common questions I've gotten on the homework. Hopefully that helps clarify some things. Um, and you find it useful. Okay, let's go ahead and get to the midterm. So, midterm, if you haven't noticed, it's on Saturday, hopefully you know that. Um, it's at noon on Saturday. Before noon, so about five, 10 minutes early, sit down at your computer and I want you to do a couple things. I want you to log into UB Learns, log into UB Box, Log into Zoom, UB Zoom, zoom.buffalo.us or whatever it's called, and open up MATLAB. So open up UB Learns because that is where your test is going to be deployed. So on UB Learns underneath week by week material, you've seen hopefully by now that folder that says midterm. It contains all the midterm practice material, which will be added to today. Uh, and um, there will be another folder that contains the test and um, the submission link. So log into UB Learns because you're going to want to get access to that as soon as possible. Log into UB Box because when you open up your test, there's going to be six questions. Those questions are going to be links to box folder files, just like your homework. So you'll get your six links. You will, I encourage you to open up all of them right away. And if you're logged into UB Box, you won't have to do extra clicks. So open up all your files. You'll see your six problems that you have to do. And you have 90 minutes to do the exam. And then you'll have an additional 10 minutes to submit everything. So when you um, get ready, when you're getting ready, open up MATLAB. And, I, and you don't have to do this. The instructions say to create a by a folder in your current folder. You don't have to, that's just trying to reinforce good habits. Um, but what I want you to do is before the exam, open up MATLAB, get to your current folder, wherever you can right click, say new folder, call it midterm, click into it. There you go. That's where all of your files will go. Then you're not cluttered by everything else. And you can just look at these files and know that these are the six files that I need to submit. You will submit these files to a separate link just like you submit your homework. And so it'll be a separate link um, that you'll submit all of your six files. Okay, make sure you name them appropriately. Okay. So a couple things to do before you get your exam ready. 
log into UB Learns, log into UB Box, open up MATLAB, create that folder. Um, so you just submit all six at once, just like you do your homework. That's just obnoxious. I'm not going to create six different submission file locations. That's just unnecessary. Uh, another thing, your exam is proctored via Zoom. You are going to need some sort of device, typically your phone, that you are going to log into Zoom on. So you need to be logged into Zoom with your UB account, otherwise you will not be let in. And if you're not let in, then you're not, uh, then you're not gonna get credit for the exam. Um, so take your phone, whatever, uh, something with camera. Okay. Um, get your camera. My random mix keeps choosing non-instrumental songs. Uh, log into Zoom on your phone or whatever device you want to watch you. <laughs> Sounds so creepy. Um, and uh, you're going to put it somewhere so that it's watching you take the exam. So it should be angled in a way where it sees you and part, part of your screen. You get 90 minutes. Okay. It does not need to be your camera. It can be a second computer. It can, or it does not need to be your phone. It can be a second computer. It can be a webcam. However, you decide that you want the camera watching you take your exam. Um, uh, da, da, da. Yes. So, okay. So, um, Michael, comments are not necessary for exam questions. You are not graded on your comments. You're graded on your code. So don't waste your time writing comments unless you are trying to explain to the grader that this is what this code should do and it's not working or this is what you might do if you had more time. Um, space engineering student, um, so it's an open book, open note exam. You have access to your textbook, you have access to everything in MATLAB, you have access to everything on UB Learns. Um, you can Google things if you really want to. I encourage you to create a couple cheat sheets that identify how you're supposed to do things. So if you really struggle with remembering what a switch statement looks like, write down what a switch statement looks like. If you're struggling to remember how to do something, write it down on that sheet of paper. Remember, you only have 90 minutes to do this exam. So you don't have time to necessarily be looking everything up. You can print things out if you want. If you want to print out your notes, print out your notes. You can shuffle through them. It's not that big of a deal. You have access to all of that information. Um, you just can't, you just need to solve your problems. You can't have someone else solve them for you. That's really the limit. <laughs> um, if you want to take time to watch a YouTube video, sure, technically you can go rewatch the lectures, but once again, you have 90 minutes. I encourage you to use that as a last resort. Um, AP, uh, the exam problems will be found in the same folder that the midterm is listed in. Um, yes, you can have your notes on an iPad if you have a separate device, like a tablet. Um, you can have your notes on that. Um, that's fine. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, what time does class end? 20? Okay. Yeah, 20. Uh, okay. So... I think that's everything I wanted to say about the exam. So once again, on Saturday, sit down, log into Zoom. Oh, you'll also need your UBID card. Like, you need to show your face. Um, log into Zoom with your UB account. Log into uh, UB Box. Log into UB Learns. Open MATLAB. Create that current folder, right click new, create that MATLAB folder. Okay, let's do some practice problems. So these practice problems are posted. I'm gonna go through as many as I can. Like I said, I only got through two this morning. All the solutions and more videos on how to do them will be posted uh, later this afternoon. I still have to create it, but that's what this afternoon is for. Okay, so here's this first problem. So write a function b equals modify array a comma n that takes a square array a of arbitrary size m by n and n is an integer equal to the required size in the new array b. 
Don't get bogged down in the text. Some problems, there's going to be more text than others. Uh, there's usually not too many text. There's definitely not a, as big as your homework problems. Um, but start small. So I know I need to create a function, b equals modify array a comma n. So I'm going to start there. Function. Function b equals modify array a comma n. Save it. If it's a function, it needs to be named the same. So modify array, modify array. Okay. Saved it. Great. That takes a square array A. So A is going to be a square array of size M by N. And N is an integer. Uh, equal to the required size of the new array B. So I'm going to start by, in my program, figuring out what M is. So A is M by M. M by M. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable in my array that equals M. So M equals the size of A comma 1. Just so that I have some sort of direct translation between what is written in my homework document versus, or in my exam document versus what I'm doing on my screen. So now when I see the comment that says, if N is less than M, I now have N in my program and M. You don't have to do it this way. That's completely fine if you don't. I'm just saying it might help if you name your variables the same. So A is an arbitrary size matrix, arbitrary size square matrix, and N is an integer equal to the required size in the new array B. So that means B is going to be an N by N. Yes, so, um, so let me talk about size and um, length. So when you are determining the size of a vector, of a vector, you can use the length function, not an issue. When you are trying to determine the size of a, an array, a two-dimensional array, a matrix, you want to use um, this in order to figure out how many rows there are. If you want to figure out how many columns, it would be a two here. And if you wanted both, you could do this. So once again, this is what you might write on your cheat sheet. Say, so if I want the number of rows, I type this. If I want the number of columns, I type this. If I want both, I type this. Okay, so I could find the rows or columns. Technically, those should be the same. So I'm just going to figure out the number of rows. Okay, so I know what A is. I know what uh, N is. If N is less than M, so I know I need some sort of if statement. I'm going to make a decision. If N is less than M. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size of A from an M by M matrix to an N by N matrix by deleting rows and columns from the bottom and the right. There are going to be examples given to you most of the time. Here's the example for this problem. A is a two by two, N is three. It doesn't match the situation. So if you have an example that's given to you that doesn't match the situation, come up with your own. So let's say A looks like this. So here M would be equal to three, and let's say N is two. So if N is less than M, I'm going to delete rows and columns of the bottom, uh, of the bottom and the right. So I'm going to delete this one and delete this one. There are several ways you can do this problem. You could literally just delete them. So you could say A, I'm going to delete my last rows, so all, or my last columns, all rows, columns, and a plus one to the end. And the bottom one, so n plus one to the end. So this would delete those rows and delete those columns and just kind of chop off a and make it smaller. This is one of the ways to do those problems, to do this problem. You can stop here. You can say, okay, I've done something. I want to go ahead and test my code. It is very, very important that you test your code. So B here equals modify array. Um, I need an A matrix. 
create an A matrix. A equals rand I, uh, three comma three. If you ever need to come up with an A matrix, use rand. You guys have seen me do this many times. This creates just a, an array of random numbers. That's three by three. Um, it saves you the trouble of trying to come up with a matrix yourself. Okay. Then test your function. Modify array. A, let's say N is two. Okay, so I get an error. It says output argument B and others may not be assigned during this call. So I never said B equals. That's what it means. I'll put argument B. I never said B equals anything. So somewhere I need to see B equals A. I could do it beforehand and you delete the columns from B or at the end I can say B equals A. So somewhere I need to indicate that B equals something. So like I said, multiple ways to do this problem. Okay, so if A looks like this, B looks like this. So something is not right. Okay, so test your code. So all rows, two, three. If you are struggling and needing to debug your code in a function, I create your variables to identify what each your inputs are. So A equals this, N equals something. So I need to say N equals two and then highlight and see what happens. So A all rows N uh, plus one to the end is this last row. I should be able to just say that's zero or that's, that's empty. Same thing here. Okay, so I said N plus one to the end and it gave me four numbers. So I forgot here to identify that I'm talking about these rows, these columns. Okay, so now when I do it, now it does it appropriately. So I'm gonna go back and recreate A and then retest my function now that I changed it. So now it works. If A looks like this and N is two, it chops off this and it chops off uh, the right and the bottom. So there we go, I've done that first one. This is one way to do it. You could also just say that B equals A one comma N uh, one colon N. You could also just do this. That also works. Um, it should work. I did this this morning. Why is it failing? Oh. Um, so I didn't do this. I only had n plus one colon end. I gave it one number versus rows and columns. I forgot to tell it which columns. So, um, so let's say N, let's say A was a four by four. Let's say A is a four by four and N equals two. So if A looks like this, whoops, I want it to be columns three and four. So that's why I have N plus one. It's whatever that N is. N plus one that all the way to the end. So anything passes. I want my final answer to be just a two by two. So this is, says deleting, deleting those last columns. Yes, I always want it to be that last column because I'm trying to delete the columns from the end, from the right, because that's what my document says. Okay, so that's if N is less than M. Okay, I've done that one, check. If N is greater than M. So now I could say if N, whoop, if N is greater than M, I could write a completely separate if statement. That is valid. However, um, however, these are related choices. I either have N greater than M or N less than M. So I really should write them as an if else. This is my first option. This is my second option. So if N is greater than M, then I'm going to add zero rows and zero columns. So here's that example. So here M equals two. If N is three, I want to add zeros to increase the size of my matrix. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. I could do it two ways. I could say, I could add to A. 
So I could say a n plus one to the n. Uh, don't forget my colon. Rather than deleting them, I could say they're zero. Now my extra columns say they're zero. Uh, same thing, n plus one to the n comma da, da, equals zero. Okay, so now I'm gonna test it. A looks like this, A is a four by four. Let's say that N is a six. Okay, once again, we've got this B might not be assigned, so I'm just gonna delete that, make sure that B equals A. Okay, nothing happened, nothing changed. So I'm gonna step through this one by one. So A looks like that, N is six. So I'm in this situation, make sure that n is greater than m, m is, yeah, so this, we're in the situation. Here we go. A colon n plus one to the n is an empty matrix. If I try to assign that to zero, nothing happens. Turns out my end number, so n plus one is seven, end is four. So this creates an empty matrix. So I don't need n plus one to the end, I want m plus one to n. I want to increase it. So you just have to change your indexes. Indices. Sometimes I need to figure out what that is. There we go. Sometimes um, you're going to have to do something on paper. You're going to have to figure out. Okay, what are my values? What is n equals something? What is m equals something? What happens when I say a colon, uh, what are we at? Uh, four, or what was it? Seven to the four. This here is invalid. Okay, so something happened where you're trying to figure out, okay, that's not what I wanna do. What columns do you want to change? I want to change columns five and six. Where do I get five from? Where do I get six from? How do I know those are the numbers I want? So it should be m plus one colon to the n. I'm adding past the size of a all the way to however many I wanted to change. Uh, yeah, Michael, you could calculate n plus one, um, n to plus one. So let's see what happens when, um, when, when we do that. So m plus one, what did I have before? m plus one to the end plus, well, it would be two in this situation. So let's recreate our A. So A is a four by four like that. If I do this, so it does add more. So N plus two, you would just need a way to figure out what that two is. Completely valid. Absolutely. There's a lots of ways to do things. I didn't even think about that one. Um, so yes, you would just need to figure out how to calculate that plus two. This is one way to do it. You could also do it where you say B equals zeros. Whoa. indent b equals zeros of n by n and you can say b of one to n comma one to n equals a oh one to m you could do it this way instead that's another way to do it so there's more than one way to do these problems Definitely more than one way to do these problems. You can directly change A and then assign B to A at the end, or you could start with B and add to it whatever A contains. Another thing to note is you want to test all of your situations. So we've tested it when N is less than the size of A. We've tested it with when N is greater than the size of A. But what about when it's the same size of A? So what if n is four? Okay, our document says if m equals n, woo, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, if m equals n, no change is required. So I'm testing it with all of my situations. This scenario where n equals the size of a, it says output argument b may not be assigned. So I'm just gonna add in an else here that says b equals a. So if it's neither of these, then at least do this. This is one way to do it. This is not the only way to do it. This is one way to do it. 
So now when I test it again, I don't have any errors. So make sure you guys are testing all of your scenarios, all of the situations, specifically when it comes to if statements, what happens if this happens? What happens if this? What happens in this? All of your options, just like with the lower and the upper. Okay, that's the first question. Okay, and then just open up a new script file. Don't worry about closing anything out. Just open it up and keep moving on. Okay, number two it says write a function checker equals checkerboard m comma n. I don't even know what the rest of it says. I'm writing a function. Um, it says to name your variable checker. It's a little long. That's six care, seven characters. Um, it doesn't matter what you name your variables for your functions. I'm going to call it C. C equals checker board uh, M comma N. Sometimes, like on the last one, it helped to name our variables the same. However, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I don't want to type checker a million times. So I'm going to call it C. Okay, write a function called checker. I wrote it. I'm going to save it. Same name as my uh, function. So checker board, checker board. Woohoo, that matches. Okay, and this one is going to create a checkerboard pattern of ones and zeros with m rows and n columns. So I'm going to initialize C by saying zeros m comma n. Because I know I want C to be at least an m by n. The one one position should be a one and the remaining rows and columns should alternate between one and zero. So here's an example. If M is three and N is four, this is what I need to create. Okay. So I just need to alternate between ones and zeros. There's lots of ways to do this problem. But at minimum, we are going to iterate through our array and add a one in every other location. If you are iterating through a vector, if you are trying to go through every value in a vector, you would say for i equals one to the length of your vector. If you are iterating, whoops, if you are iterating through a two dimensional array, there's a couple of ways we can do it. Sure, you can use the i function, but the i function isn't going to do anything past here. The I function will stop at the, the square array. It's a good question. That's a good, um, good one though. So I, uh, three comma five, see, it just stops here. You can, you just still have to add more. Um, okay. So this is to iterate through a vector, just a single go through all the values in a vector. If you want to iterate through an array, you can say one to numal C. So this is the number of elements. It's gonna go uh, column wise. So it's gonna do this number, then this number, then this number, then this one, 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 etc. Oh wait. Or you can use nested loops. So for i equals one to the number of rows, j for j equals one to the number of columns. These are the two main ways to iterate through arrays. So let me start with this one, this first one. So I want to add a one every other location. So if I'm going to say if I'm at an odd location, so if I want to figure out if a number is odd, I say mod i comma two equals one. So here's an odd location. I'm going to add um, ci equals one. I'm going to start there. Okay, test your function. So um, C equals checkerboard. I'm going to check to see first if it works for a square matrix, a three by three. Hey, that works for a three by three. Woohoo! I'm going to check to see if it works if the number of rows is greater than the number of columns, or the number of columns is greater than the number of rows. There we go, that works. I'm checked for three by three, three by five. What about if it's the opposite? That works too. Notice I've only checked it for odd numbers. I'm gonna check it to see if it works for a four by four. It doesn't work for a four by four. So this is why it's important to check for different scenarios because it appeared to work for these three scenarios, but I didn't check it with 
an even number. So make sure you check it with lots of different options. Yeah, so this is one of the ways to do it. Um, okay, so now I need to change it. Now I need to think about it differently. Um, one way we figured out this morning was we could iterate through the number of rows and insert each row independently. So 4i equals 1 to the number of rows. In this instance, the number of rows is m. There's already a variable that contains the number of rows for this problem. So now I'm going to insert my numbers row by row. So if it's an odd row, so if my row is odd mod i comma 2 equals 1, odd row, I'm going to insert a 1 in um, the odd locations. So c row i comma 1 colon 2 comma end equals a 1. Otherwise, if it's an even row, then I want it in all the even locations. So here's another way to do it. Once again, let's test it. Oop. Don't run your functions. <laughs> uh, let's test it. Okay, let's test it for my three by five. Okay, it works for my three by five. It works for my five by three. Um, let's see if it works for my, it works for my four by four. So once again, test with lots of different options. So we could just insert our ones row by row. This is another way to do it. So a lot of times there might be more than one way to do a problem. If it works, you're good. Numal is short for number of elements. Number of elements. It's got the num l numal. Another way we can do it is if we say for i equals 1 to the number of rows, which is m, for j equals 1 to the number of columns, which is n, I could use nested loops and insert my 1 at a time. So insert a 1 in the 1, 1 location, insert a 1 in the 1, 3 location, insert a 1 in the 2, 2 location, in the 2, 4 location, the 3, 1. Uh, if you notice, that occurs when my i and j, my row and columns, sum to an uh, even number. So I'm going to say if mod i plus j, comma 2 equals 0, even number, then c i comma j equals 1. Nope, don't run it. So it works for my 4, my 4. It works for my five by three. Mod is a remainder. Yeah, it's a remainder. It's checking to see if I divide this number by two, how much is left over. If it's evenly divisible by two, if it's even, I should have zero left over. If it's not, I should have one. Okay. Um, so make sure, so, so one key point is if you did it this way and you didn't check for all scenarios, it's not the end of the world. You will get most of the points um, because it's you. Ha there's plenty of partial credit. Um, so uh, if you did it this way and didn't test, it's not the end of the world. It worked some of the time, not all of the time. Uh, why did you so I plus J? So um, this let me look at the example. This is the 1-1 one, one location, this is a 3-1 location, this is the 2-4 two, location, 2-2 two, two location, 3-1, um, 3-3. Three, three, three. I noticed that if I added all of these together, this is 2, this is 4, 6, 4, 4, 6, uh, they're all even numbers. If I look at this one here, it is the three, four location, that's seven. So I just, I came up with a way to figure out um, how to do it. If you can figure out a way to do it without loops, go ahead, do it without loops. I wanted to illustrate loops and if statements and nested structures, so that's what I did. I haven't, there's no way to do it without loops that like is sitting in the top of my head being like, oh, do this instead. If there is for you, sure. Um, uh, also, uh, keep in mind, um, unless you are told to do something a specific way, you have complete freedom. Like, unless you are told to use loops in this problem, 
You don't need to use loops. If you can find a way to do it without loops, do it without loops. If it makes sense to do it with loops, do it with loops. Whatever makes sense to you. Um, unless you are told specifically to do it a certain way. Um, you might be hinted and told you don't need to use loops. Uh, but if unless it says do not use loops, uh, then you can do it without loops. Um, yes, you could. If it's odd, I don't know of a way to figure out if a number is odd using round. Um, that's how you can check to see if it's even. If they're not equal, then I'm assuming it would be odd. Let's let's see. Let's see. Um, round. Shoot. I divided by two equals two. I divided by two. So if they're not equal, let's see if this works. Sure, that works too. At least it appears to work. That works too. So there's more than one way to do things. More than one way to do things. Once again, write down in your sheet. If I want to figure out an odd number, this is what I do. Choose one option. This works. Mod works. Uh, either one. Um, I think... Well, we're out, of, we're out of time. So we're going to go ahead and stop there. Um, oh, I did want to make a, a comment in terms of fprintf and display. You're probably not going to... I don't remember... Exactly, but most of the time you're not going to be told whether or not to use fprintf or display. Choose whichever one you want, whichever one you want. Keep in mind, fprintf, you have full control over how things are displayed, including decimal points. Disp, you do not. Um, if you are told to print out a number with a specific number of digits past the decimal point, you're going to need to use fprintf. If you are not told a specific number of digits past the decimal point, Make it up, do whatever you want, whatever makes sense. Um, so you are gonna have some freedom to to choose what to do uh, in certain scenarios. Um, okay, with that, we are done. I will post video solutions and solutions to the rest of these problems. Um, I encourage you to try them on your own first and then watch the uh, solution. Um, and with that, I will see you guys on Saturday. The Zoom link will be emailed to you and posted on UELearns later. I haven't created it yet. I'm still missing some information. Any final questions before we head out? Hopefully you find this useful. Get your homework in. Um, I mean, Sophia, it, that's hard to tell. Uh, homework eight is technically due Wednesday. I changed the due date on UB Learns. I had it originally due Friday. Um, because my suggestion, if you have the energy and the margin to do everything before the exam, I encourage you to finish everything for MATLAB before the exam. But you do not have to. Um, so if you're able to do practice problems, you should be okay for the exam. Practice problems, they're, they're practice problems. It's hard to really tell because the exam isn't, it's not just do the same calculation you've been doing. It's here is a problem that's similar to what you've seen before. Now modify it and change it and do it with a different condition. Um, so it's hard to really tell, but yeah, you should be well practiced. <laughs> Okay, with that, see you guys on Saturday.